Welcome to New Hampshire's Wild Side. I'm Christina Lupi. And I'm Mark Beauchene. We'll take you behind the scenes of the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department to learn more about the projects and people of your wildlife agency. We'll also give you tips and tactics to help you make the most of your time in New Hampshire's woods and waters. And along the way, we'll meet real people who love life outdoors. Now, let's discover more about New Hampshire's wild side. The Cooperative Recovery Initiative grant that was awarded to U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Fish and Game is to increase the population of Carner Blue Butterflies here in Concord, New Hampshire. The Concord Pine Barrens is the only location in New England where the Carner Blue Butterfly lives. We have a recovery goal of 3,000 butterflies In order to achieve the goal of the grant, we laid out a few actions that we would take over three years. Our first action was to manage all occupied subpopulations. So we have different steps we use to maintain the Pine Barrens as suitable habitat for the Carners. Part of that is tree clearing, so we want to make sure there's open, sunny spots for the lupin to grow. In this spot specifically where we are, we have opened it up by doing some tree shearing. And we also have had a prescribed burn in here. This was one of the patches we burned in the fall of 2016. So when we burn, it flushes nutrients and the lupin is able to come back tenfold. Our ideal process is to bronto or remove trees, tree shear, and then we would mow an area to get everything kind of an even layer. And then we would burn it and then seed drill it with lupin. And then it, the habitat would come back ideally to what we would want. Our next action was to create two new subpopulations of Carner Blue butterflies. And then finally, we were captive rearing and releasing butterflies to occupy the new habitat. In our captive rearing facility, we raise all life stages of the Carner Blue butterfly. So we collect females from the wild and we set up these egg cups which provide water, nectar, honey, lupin. And so we'll collect the wild females. We do it after about five or six days after we've seen them in the wild to give them time to um, have mated. And so we'll bring them back and we'll collect the eggs from her and first brood. And then we'll raise those until they get to the chrysalis stage. And then we have them enclose or hatch out as adults and then we will release those out to the wild and then we'll do the same thing again once we collect all the eggs to, to grow and do the second brood on. Funding from the grant allowed New Hampshire Fish and Game staff and seasonals to monitor the outcomes of activities. We do distance transect monitoring for second brood corners. We have a set length of transect, normally it's about 100 meters, in a plot that's known to have lupin in it or would be a good habitat or sites where we know we have corners. And so we have the transect and with that transect white pole we have, we walk to the different flags and when we are walking we're seeing if we're flushing any corners and what that does is it gives us a population estimate. By managing the Pine Barrens to improve habitat quality for the Carner Blue Butterfly, we're also increasing nectar available for a variety of pollinators, such as the frosted elfin, bumblebees, other native ground nesting bees, moths, and various ants and beetles. The goal of the grant is to create more habitat 
for a self-sustaining population of Carner Blue Butterfly in the future. With over 975 lakes and ponds to play on, it's better outside because we're here connecting you to life outdoors. Now watch this. Like our homes, the forests and lands around us also need to be maintained. An often misunderstood concept. When we first looked at this property, there were, there were about 50 acres that have been pretty much clear cut. And we came in and we said, oh, this is the ugliest thing we've ever seen. But the Mitchells soon realized their thoughts about clear cuts might be wrong. When we moved in, we were delighted to find that we had whippoorwills even at 4.30 in the morning. We still enjoyed them. And uh, we also had towhees. Uh, the towhees disappeared. And the more we learned about early successional habitat, the more we realized that we were losing the habitat that a lot of these birds that we were enjoying needed. They realized something needed to be done. Our ideal used to be all old growth forest. That's, that's all that anyone needs, including the, the, the wildlife. And, and we learned that that's really not the case and, and different wildlife has different habitat requirements. New Hampshire is lucky to have lots of mature forest, but a habitat type that's dwindling from the landscape and is used by over 70 species is young forests. It's an essential habitat needed by many songbirds, like whippoorwills, towhees, and a whole host of other wildlife. really the structure of those forests that are important. They're really dense and the um, young trees grow very close together and so they provide a lot of protection for a variety of birds especially but also mammals as well. But as New Hampshire's forests have matured, that young forest habitat is harder to find and so are the many types of wildlife that need it. Different wildlife respond to different sizes of vegetation. So if we want a diversity of wildlife species, we need all those size classes on the landscape. And the only way to get those is to either make it ourselves, to plan for it and make it ourselves through cutting, through commercial cutting or non-commercial cutting, or wait for Mother Nature to do it for us. And often she doesn't do it in the right places. On properties throughout the state, the science of forestry and habitat management is being used to help create more habitat diversity. Through well-planned harvesting, including clear cuts, prescribed burning, mowing, and many other techniques, the state's native wildlife will have an important ecosystem to help maintain healthy populations. We are on the Tucker property, which is owned by Southeast Land Trust. It's about a 200 acre property, and we are creating some openings for wildlife here. This work is being done through a grant from the Natural Resources Conservation Service. By creating a diversity of habitats on this property, it will support a greater diversity of wildlife. On this property, most of the forest is the same age, so the trees are all pretty small. In this case, we're going to make about four openings this year, and then hopefully in five to ten years, we'd be able to come back and make some more openings in between those openings so that you end up with a diversity of habitat over time, a mix of young and old forest coming in. In the past, naturally occurring floods and forest fires helped maintain the natural diversity. Flooding and fires are things that we tend to try to prevent from happening on the landscape with a good reason. We want to protect our property, um, but we've sort of slowed down the processes that naturally created those habitats. So occasionally we have to step in and, and create those habitats where we can if we have a good opportunity to do so. The new openings over time will grow into mature forests. This is why new openings are cut next to them to help maintain the young forest habitat that so many types of wildlife need. And once the work is done, it doesn't take long for Mother Nature to respond. 
we just cut this this winter and already you can see all of the ferns that have come back and the grasses and seedlings that are already coming in and we just pulled out of here in March and this is just July. As some landowners have learned, first impressions of a clear-cut landscape can be deceiving. Now we're paying money to create the same, same habitat. And, and we walk in an area like this now and we say, wow, what a great early successional forest. You know, think of all the wildlife that's, that's taking advantage of this. And so our, our outlook has really, really changed. Young forests are nature's supermarket and neighborhood. Without this valuable habitat, New Hampshire's woods would not be the same place. There are 365 days in a year. New Hampshire Fishing Game's six hatcheries are open all of them, raising fish that will become part of your next outdoor adventure. We're on New Hampshire's Connecticut River near Hanover, New Hampshire. I'm with my good friend, Carlton Schumacher. We're gonna catch some fish and then Carlton's gonna cook us some shore lunch. Actually, I got him. Let's go. Good job. Jay Pickerel. Mini Northern. All right, Mark. We're in business. Found a fish. We can find some walleye. So we caught some fish. What are you going to do with them? We're going to blacken the fish. We're going to do some potatoes with some fiddleheads today. We have some nice fresh fiddleheads for the season. And uh, we'll probably put some garlic and some thyme in there. Some blackened fish will be great. I made some homemade tartar sauce. We should have a nice little lunch. Excellent. You want to have a nice tight curl with no feathers coming off the stalk. Bacon, butter, oil. This is regular bacon. I'm going to just render it in the pan. Um, the bacon fat will help cook the potato. You can only smell sizzle. I know, it's so good. If you don't pre-cook the potatoes, they tend to be very difficult to cook through. They tend to get really dark on the outside. So that's one of the secrets to camp cooking. You should do as much prep work as you can, because once you're out here and you're enjoying yourself, I want to be doing as little cooking, as much eating, as much fishing as I can. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to it. Normally adding cold oil to a hot pan would be bad, but since the pan is nice and warm, uh, it heats up really fast. And that helps to get that nice crust, kind of like what you do with a french fry. In a few minutes, I'll put some onions in, put some thyme, I'll add a little garlic, and we're gonna get ready and do our fish. I'm gonna put the onion in now. Eventually, it'll cook through, but right now, I'm just gonna get it a little bit softer than it is. So I'm gonna leave those alone, and now I'll work on um, the fish here a little bit. We'll start getting it out. There are probably no better fish to eat in fresh water than a walleye. I agree. That's the best. And you add walleye and fiddleheads, and you're just saying, spring in New Hampshire. Here it is. Oh, these are nice fillets, Mark. Good job. garlic in. Put the garlic in, eventually I'll mix that up in there, but if you put it on that cast iron, black garlic is about the worst thing that you can do to this. There's the There's color and the, the flavor of spring Look at those right guys, there. we just got those. Some fresh cracked pepper. Fresh cracked pepper. The secret to getting this, this blackening is to get the pan smoking hot. You're going to see this get like wisps of smoke coming off. Mm. And it's gotta be rocking hot. And then what you do is put it on for just a couple minutes. And as long as you get one side black and the other side almost will cook through. All right. Beautiful. All right, these are getting happy. Now to, to blacken something, you actually need to coat it with oil before you put it in the pan. If you put, put it in the pan, you're essentially pan frying it. This is a medium spice blend. It's hard to find walleyes anywhere else. Let's do this. Woo. That's hot. Yeah. It smells wonderful. Yeah, we're going to be eating pretty quick here, which I'm happy about. Oh. Look at that. I think we're going to have to go out and catch some more fish. I think I'm okay <laughs> with that. I'm hungry, Mark. Uh, I can eat all that. Got a lot here. Mark, can you grab some silverware for us? Certainly. Some homemade tartar sauce. Mm. It's a 
was good. Lacking it just right. It's perfect. Use the hashtag BetterOutside when you share your videos or photos showing how you connect to life outdoors. And be sure to tag New Hampshire Fishing Game on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching. To learn more about life outdoors and New Hampshire Fishing Game, check out these videos and subscribe.